Hey. Welcome to our second episode of Sunday Drive with Zim. Today we're going to be talking about violence in VR and why this is an important addition to a VR title. Also, I'll answer where's that coming from? So we actually have a VR review grid with all the characteristics we feel are needed, are important to a VR game. These are them represented on screen, 12 of them. And in the lower right hand corner you'll see the mature banner. So this is slotting in there, violence as part of mature. Tactile we covered off last time and this time we're gonna be covering off violence. All right, with that, let's go ahead and hop out into a game. What's the game for today? Game's gonna be red out. All right, it's quite a colorful game. Lovely, lovely, jubbly. Let's go ahead and pick something that we can use for this. That sounds good. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's go for, oh, that looks not bad. Violence, that'll, that'll do. That'll do! That'll do! That'll do! Alright. Let's go ahead and get talking. So, plan for this episode is very simple. I've got to try to convince the developers out there who haven't otherwise considered why is violence a, an important aspect to consider for your game. Let's first talk about a couple of good examples that we've seen, successes out there in the VR industry who have successfully used violence to enhance their stories. Okay. Let's start off with one of my favorites, Doom VFR. That's a good one. The game itself was kind of very, uh, very straightforward. Okay. Another one, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 7, you had cannibalism, if that's not violence, I don't know what is. <clears throat> okay. And third, last but not least, I will say Dispatch, which had elements of, elements of domestic violence used to portray an enthralling story of disabled man taking on a police job and struggling with some mental anguish himself turning out to be well I won't I won't spoil the ending <laughs> these are all excellent however I will say that much really really fantastic titles so check out all three They're very good um, what more can we say so look Violence in video games. It's like adding, it's like adding a bit of a flair, this kind of grip onto your experience. I think it's, I think violence is very well coupled with silence, both in terms of uh, the voice acting, so what people are actually saying alongside a visual depiction of violence or mental anguish or something along those lines being depicted in your title. There was a, there was a, kind of an educational, I don't know if you want to call it that, an educational app, I think it was by the BBC, that touched upon a terrorist uh, hostage taking situation. And someone had, uh, there was a news reporter who had a gun to his head and another one who was, you're the, you're the character and you're watching this, uh, to say whether or not that other guy's gonna live. Sure was gripping. Made you feel right and comfortable. And actually, I think that violence goes hand in hand with a feeling of discomfort to an extent. To an extent. I mean, if there's anyone out there who doesn't get a funny twinge in their tummy when they're <laughs> when they're uh, when they're playing Gorn and rip off an arm and start beating to death a soldier with their friend's arm. I mean, this is been there throughout video gaming history of course but I do think that it, it plays an important role allows those escapists to kind of get away and do something crazy they wouldn't do you know in real life 
like myself. There's certainly plenty of things that I would not consider doing in real life that, you know, in a VR environment, you get the option to do. Shooting a gun is one of them. I, I have no interest, actually, myself in, in ever firing off and firing off a handgun or whatever. Some of you probably already have that experience. Maybe you've had mandatory military service in your country, or you just had an interest and you're like, let me go shoot off a Desert Eagle. Had your arm almost blown off in doing that. You know? <laughs> it's all possible. But yeah, for me, I, I just have no interest in that. But in a game, I love my shooter games. I love FPSs. It's a Battlefield fan, Resident Evil, Left 4 Dead. Loved all these games. Onward's nice. Firewall's better. Ho ho ho! Don't polarize the environment, Zim. I'll come at you in the comments. <laughs> come at me, comment bros. And I'm trying to think of a good word that rhymes with bros. No, that's not a good word. Move on, Zim. You're digging a hole. <laughs> All right. So, violence in video games, right? So those those examples that I gave. Let's take. Let's go. Let's go on microscope. Microscope. Let's go microscopy. 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 Let's micro scrapey on Doom VFR, right? What's what's Doom got for it? Telefragging. It's got telefragging. It's got plenty of blood and disturbing scenes that it's got. Oftentimes, it's had it's had people um, doing all kinds of things, nasty things in its games. Its software is known for it. Behind Quake and all that. And when you played Quake 2 and saw the dudes on crosses getting squashed, you pushed a button, like, I mean, it's, it, it knows how to, it, ID software, knows how to leverage violence to help support a story. A lot of games like uh, Skyrim, my favorite VR title, does a great job of this as well. Doesn't go too crazy on the old violence, but has it, it has it a lot. It's got arrows sticking out of people's heads, it's got... Spider legs. It's all kinds of stuff going on in that. But I think it's really important. I think it's uh, it's something that some developers will shy away from. They think, oh god, the rating of my game is going to ratchet up and all that. But I think if you're very real with yourself, like VR to me, one of the benefits is simulation. And if you're, if you're sugarcoating what's actually happening in real life in a situation, like that earlier hostage situation I mentioned. I mean, the guy ends up getting shot and you're shocked for a second thinking oh, oh my god and then you're thinking am I next even though you're just a player in a game you know to, to have you think of those things or in dispatch see a woman getting beaten by her husband or boyfriend and uh, know what that feels like you know just a little bit you won't know what it actually feels like the kind of years of just anguish and stress that's taken years off your life, let alone the physical side of of those situations. But I think I think I think absolutely VR, you know, violence belongs in VR. Not in every title, but it, it certainly belongs. It's like a seasoning, you know. When when added in the right amounts it can make a meal. If overdone, your meal's gonna taste hella salty, right? So, my message to developers is consider violence for your game. I don't really care what kind of game it is. Think about how you can shock and get the attention of your players. Would they, would they, you know, would they appreciate it? Would it make an addition? Maybe you're maybe you're able to maybe you're able to work that out and then add it into your title. We covered a few aspects of violence in this episode, and I just wanted to give you guys a, a flavor of another one of the important categories that we have that we consider when we rate a VR title. After having played about 700 VR games. Violence and the overall mature banner that we that holds it is an important component 
into making up a truth-telling story, a story that grips you in a way others do not, that helps you wake up to the message that you're trying to say, either through a protagonist, an antagonist, or just the general environment that the characters find themselves set in. So anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. This was uh, read out, and I'd just like to give a quick shout to Abstractor, who's provided the music that we've been listening to throughout this journey. Thank you for uh, tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. All right. Thanks for joining us on our Sunday Drive.